The following graph represents the first five terms of two given patterns. In the answer box, there are different statements about the two patterns. Choose all correct statements. So here for each point, this point right over here, this represents its horizontal coordinate is the first term of pattern A, which is four, and its vertical coordinate is the first term in pattern B, which is one. And then we could do that for the other points as well. So actually, let's figure out what the values are. So we have pattern A, and then we have pattern B. So the first term for pattern A is four. And when, pa that first, when, we're, when pattern A is four, the first term for pattern B is one. The second term for pattern A is seven. And when pattern A is seven, pattern B is also seven. Third term, pattern A is 10, and pattern B is 13. And then fourth term, pattern A is, pattern A is 13 and pattern B is 19. And then finally, fifth term, pattern A is 16, is 16, and pattern B, and pattern B is 25. Now before even looking at these, let's see what we can think about these patterns here. So it looks like pattern A starts at four, and it increases by three every time. To go from one term to the next, you just have to add, just have to add three. Now what about for pattern B? Well, pattern B starts at one, and every term here, it looks like you're adding six. So when pattern A increases by three, and we're moving in the horizontal direction, the base, based on the fact that pattern A is on, represented on the horizontal axis, we're gonna move up six in the vertical axis, and we see that here. Pattern A increases by three. Pattern A increases by three from one term to the next. And when that increased by three, pattern B increased by six from one term to the next. Pattern B increased by six from one term to the next. And we see that it keeps, that it keeps, it keeps doing that. Now let's think about what we have over here to see which of these statements actually apply to this. For every term in pattern A, multiply the term by two and then subtract seven to get the corresponding term from pattern B. So let's see what that, let's see if that holds up. So according to this, if this was true, I should be able to take this, multiply by two, and subtract seven and get that. So let's see, is one equal to two times eight minus seven? Or sorry, two times four minus seven. So two times this number, two times four minus seven. Well, eight minus seven is equal to one. Is this right over here equal to two times this seven minus seven? Well, yeah, it's equal to seven. Is 13 equal to two times 10, two times 10 minus seven? Yeah, 20 minus seven is 13. Is 19 equal to two times 13 minus seven? 26 minus seven is 19. Is 25 equal to two times 16 minus seven? Well, 32 minus, minus seven is 25. So this first statement checks out. For the corresponding term, the value of pattern B is two times the value of pattern A minus seven. Now let's look at the second one. The terms of pattern B are always greater than or equal to their corresponding terms from pattern A. Well, no, that's not right. It's true for a couple of scenarios. Here for the third, fourth, and fifth term, or actually for the second, third, and fourth, second, third, fourth, and fifth terms, Pattern B is equal to or greater than pattern A, but for the first term, it's not true. Pattern A is greater, so this is not, this is not right. To get from each point to the next, you need to move three units to the right and six units up. Well, that's exactly what we talked about. From one term to the next, pattern A, along our horizontal axis, we increase by three, while pattern B, we increase, which is plotted on our vertical axis, by six. So you move three to the right and six up. So that is right. The second terms of both patterns are seven. Well, yeah, we see that right over here. The second terms are seven. We have seven here, and we have seven there. And so that is right as well. So the only one that doesn't apply is this second one. This is not right.